Okay, so some people have been asking me about how I do my shading, so let's go ahead here and do a quick little tutorial. Uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to create a layer over top of your coloring, and you want to set that layer to multiply, uh, because what we're going to do is we're going to pretty much just paint over top of it, and how I like to do that is I like to find one color that I think looks really good. It's usually going to be like a purple or a pink or a blue. And I find one really bright hue that I like, and then just alter the uh, value and saturation. Typically, I'll only stay up in the upper left-hand corner of the uh, color box there. But what you really want to do here is first you're going to want to find some uh, the colors that look really good. This one here, it's got a lot of bright colors in it, which is why I chose blue here. And so first what we've just got to do is we've got to find a shade of the blue that I chose that looks good over top of the orange, or really any color that we're using. And you're going to be doing a lot of uh, trial and error with this, just because of the way the multiply layer works, the, you know, this uh, same shade of blue won't look the same every time, just because it's going to be over top of a different color. And once I do that, I use Paint Tool Psi, as you can see here, and I really love that stabilizer option, so I just take a really small little brush, usually about a one or two size pixel, and I put the smoothing up to the, uh, or the stabilizer up to the highest setting, which on the current version I think is S7. And what I do is I just take that blue that I found, and I just outline the shadows here where they're going to be. And with the uh, shadows also, you've uh, one thing that they do is they really help convey the uh, form and the shape. So it's it doesn't really do to just lie the shadow all down on the left hand side of the image. That won't look good at all. You've got to really make sure that the shadows contour to the actual character or to the object that they're on. And once I've gone ahead and figured out how I want the shadow to look, in this case on her face, I just go ahead here and color it in. I don't actually color this quickly, I've just sped up the video here to make it go faster. This whole thing here that I did took me about an hour just to shade, and I didn't even shade the whole thing, so that's why I've sped a lot of this video up. And now that I've colored that down, I realize I don't really like the color there, so I'm going to actually change that shade of blue to make it a little lighter, which makes the uh, shadow look a bit more gray and a bit less blue on her face. But the blue, uh, the reason why I use blue or purple or pink is because it helps the, uh, it helps the whole image pop. And one thing you'll also uh, realize too is that the same, you don't want to use the same value and same saturation. You're going to change that up for every color. And the easiest way to do that is to set the layer to preserve opacity or opacity lock and then find the new color that you want, and that way you can color over the shading, and it will only color over the shading. It won't lay down any other color anywhere else. And now that I've figured out the colors that I want, I'm just doing the same thing on the rest of her body here, where I just outline the shadow and then color that in. And you'll notice one thing I do a lot, whether I'm coloring, inking, or whatever, is I do use a lot of the eraser tool, because it just helps keep the line going in the same direction. That way you don't have to guess and it doesn't look disjointed. But I'm just doing the same thing here, where I uh, color down with the first shade of blue that I found, and then once I've got that all put down, I just change, or I just correct it over the uh, white bits there. And for every itty bitty little thing, I just, you know, change up the value or the saturation a little bit because it does look different over every top, or over top every color it'll go. And one thing here with the hair, I did go ahead and uh, do this part at real time here. 
uh, when you're coloring hair, you really do want to avoid trying to color every single strand of hair. That, that generally just tends to look really bad. But instead, think of the hair as not quite a single mass, but... Yeah, not, not a whole bunch of itty-bitty singular things either. And the, sh the shadow with the hair won't typically tend to go all in the same direction, and it won't go with the grain of the hair. Usually it'll go across, which is something that, you know, uh, depending on your style and how you choose to do it, you know, that'll really determine how it looks in your final result there. But yeah, just basically it helps to, you know, think of the hair as a larger object than a whole bunch of smaller objects as a general rule when you're coloring it. And just speed this up here again so it goes more quickly. And just a uh, quick note here, the undo tool is your friend, don't be afraid to use it. One thing I love about Psy here too is it can rotate the canvas for you so if you have an easier time with up and or with vertical stro strokes as opposed to horizontal, you can do that without screwing up your image. And okay, and I'm also uh, while I'm doing up this here, you know, uh, you, you might notice that I change up some things without going over to the menu, I just use the uh, basic little hotkeys, which, you know, there are a whole bunch, I'll list them in the uh, information. Okay, now, the reason why I chose this picture is because there's a whole lot of bright colors and a whole lot of contrasting colors, but I'm still going to use that same blue palette for every one of them. And, you know, uh, first I'll just do it the same way that I did with uh, Monica up there, where I outline it with the same shade of blue and uh, just color that all in and then alter the colors in a bit. And the reason why I do that rather than trying to do all of the uh, colors individually is one, it helps keep everything unified and it's easier to just set the opacity to, to lock on the layer and go back and change it that way. But you'll see here with that one single shade of blue over top all these really bright colors, it doesn't really seem to work. Everything looks kind of flat and muddy and nothing really has any contrast. It looks... it, it looks pretty bad, really. There, there's not... it. yeah, it's not something that's very attractive to look at. So we're going to do the same thing that we did with Monica, which is you set the layer to opacity lock, and then once you've done that, you go ahead and you change up the uh, value and the saturation over every single color. And, you know, you are going to have to do a little bit of experimenting with that, especially if you've got an image with a lot of color. Just because, you know, again, even if you've got two different shades of blue for your base, the... you, you won't necessarily want to have the same shade of, you know, blue or violet or whatever for your uh, for your shading, just because it won't look good. But yeah, don't be afraid to experiment with the colors. You know, you just you know, keep you know, just keep going until you find stuff that looks really good. It's a lot of trial and error. You know, and you'll notice that a few of these colors I've actually gone back and changed a few times just because once I had them up against the other colors, I realized that it didn't really look good, so I've had to go back and change it. And you'll find that you'll probably be doing that a lot, actually. But yeah, even now that we've got the uh, colors all changed up, you can see that there's a big difference with the way that everything looks together. It looks a lot more like light is actually falling on this and a lot less like I just put a blue multiply layer over top.